good morning my dear friends welcome you all to part 3 cooling load calculation video so there are four type of loads for the calculation room internal sensible load room external sensible load external to internal sensible load due to untreated air and latent load so we discussed so far till part 2 video uh, for the lighting and people load calculation that comes under room internal sensible load so now we will start part 3 video with appliance load so let's start the video so this is the bedroom uh, we saw here so in the bedroom normally we don't have uh, that much appliance so i want you to understand if we have some appliance how you will uh, how you will find out okay so that is the only reason i i consider like in this bedroom uh, there is a coffee urn so like you see here so if it is there then how to consider okay so uh, that is the that is the my that is my understanding so i just i just add it for you to understand if it is there so appliance load it's not a power input as i mentioned in the last video is a heat dissipation from the equipment okay so that's called as appliance load okay so here in the cooling load estimate heat gain from all appliances like electrical gas or steam should be taken into account for example in our case i consider one 3 gallon coffee in and there is a hair dryer okay in the hotel uh, available in the hotel so let's see how it is done the first one is uh, i have i have taken the uh, uh, this table from page number 101 table 51 of the uh, from the career handbook okay. it is a copy and so here it is a 3 gallon so is again it's a nickel plated so i consider this one so the sensible heat is 2400 and the latent heat is 1600 total is 4000 okay so let's apply this one into calculation the total load is equal to 2700 plus sorry uh, 2400 plus 1600 uh, equal to 4000 and one more thing we have a hair dryer here so hair dryer the total sensible and total together it is 2700 so let's apply this one into the calculation so here it is 2700 it is 4000 so total is 6700 btu per hour okay and similarly if you have office building medical equipment uh, laboratory equipment uh, this type of thing you can use this table this is from uh, ASHRAE application handbook for example if you have a uh, if you are working for the office building project you have the monitor and it's a very big monitor 90 to 20 inch then you can use the continuous use because office building means it will continuously you can use for 8 hours na? so that's why it will come on the continuous purpose energy saver mode means not uh, not continuous for uh, not continuous workout some random uh, you, uh, randomly you are working that one so office building you can use 80 watts so this is in watts uh, as i told in the lighting you can convert this watt to the bt per hour so similar to uh, this computer you can see the printers i can see the copiers so every machine is given here so you can follow this uh, this table from uh, as application handbook okay so this is this table also i will attach in the video description you can download and you can use it so this one i am not going to add into a our calculation because i just consider this is for your understanding it is not located in our project so we can uh, this is for your understanding only we can skip this step okay so if the if in the future if you have something like this then you need to know how to consider this one that's all so the next one is the power load or motor load so if particularly if you go to the industrial project there will be lots of machines will be there so of course this this one plays an important role okay in the production facility and this thing when it comes to residential building you have the pump room the heat exchanger room the mechanical like water supply pump room irrigation pump room firefighting pump room so these are things are there so if you want to put the ac and that uh, type of rooms those type of rooms then you need to know what is power load or motor load okay so the first important case here is for example case one you consider there is a production or fabrication facility i mean the industrial application so there we have the lathe machine automatic screw machines this type of thing so consider 45 number 10 hp motors for the machines uh, running at 80 percentage capacity okay so it has 100 percentage capacity it's running at 80 percentage capacity during various type of machines located within the uh, conditioned space okay there is a room inside the rooms uh, there there is a lap there are lap machine and screw machines are located and motor in a driver machine here so this is the important concept actually what happen here the lap machine is inside the room its motor is inside it, it fabricates some final product that final product also located inside so that is the first case okay if the final product is located going outside that is another case okay so here both are both are inside so in this one what we need to do we need to see the career handbook 104 
so here heat gain from electric motor so our first case is motor in driving machine in so in uh, based on the hp power we can consider the uh, value okay so here as i shown we have 10 hp motor so 10 hp motor the bt per hour it is 30000 bt per hour okay so this is very high okay that is the reason industrial uh, industrial ac load capacity is very high so here now 45 machines and 30,000 BT per hour and it's running at 0.8 capacity is not as a 100 percentage so the total is 1080 BT per hour load okay so the next case is 10 HP motor driving fans you, you can consider the exhaust fan okay exhaust fan with the duct which is throwing the air to the outdoor discharge okay so here what happens exhaust fan and its motor is inside the space but driving uh, driver machine outside that means the final uh, product which is the air okay the air is going to the outer discharge okay if the air is not released inside the room as you see in the case one so only the machine uh, i mean the excess fan and motor is inside the final product is, is we are throwing it outside so that time is case two okay in, normally what happened in this uh, all these cases case one creates more load because the motor is inside i mean the machine is inside its motor is inside its final product also uh, uh, produce inside only okay so now let's see so the second case is it is 5 hp motor the motor in and the final product air is going outside so here for the 5 hp it is 2800 bt per hour so finally it is heat gain to space is 10 uh, 10 10 numbers of uh, motor that means excess machine excess machine with 2800 that's a load so total it is 28000 bt per hour so the final one is case 3 in this case uh, if the machine is a pump or fan most of the powers are transferred as energy to the medium okay and the medium may be transported outside of the room for example if you consider the chilled water pipes the chilled water pumps are located in the pump room and uh, from there the water is pumped chilled water is pumped uh, to uh, throughout the building okay so this this normally comes under case 3 so normally for all our uh, things like uh, water supply pump room irrigation pump rooms um, heat exchanger pumps room so all these pumps rooms are comes under case 3 only so the fans uh, will comes under case 2 there like you see here then here the motor in and driver machine out the driver machine means don't consider it's a pump machine means it's not a pump the final product okay the motor means it's a pump and it's motor it's a motor in driver machine means the final product here the in the case of like a liquid here okay so here here there's a process water pumped to outside air condition space from the pump room so let's see the same table again so in the third case we have the 20 hp motor which is not mentioned in that uh, word file so it is total uh, bt per hour is 7500 bt per hour okay so totally uh, heat gain to space is there are three pumps so three into seven five double zero two two five double zero bt per hour okay the, the highest quantum of heat gain shall be from the case one as i mentioned because when both the motor and the driver equipment are located inside the space in case three even if both the driver and uh, driving equipment is located inside the space the pumped that means the liquid the provided the fluid is pumped outside to the conditioned space this is due to the fact that heat energy is carried away by the fluid okay so in our case we don't have any motor any power load in the system however if you have anything in the future you need to have this idea that's why i added so next the next one is partition wall partition walls uh, if you see the formula q is equal to u a delta t so the u is the uh, u value thermal transmitters i will tell you what is this and a is the area of the partition wall delta t is the temperature difference between outdoor and indoor okay so in our project so this is the room we are doing now and if you see here there is an attached bathroom so this wall actually here this is non ac this is ac and this is also ac so this wall is not a partition wall and so here also we have the ac so this is not the partition wall so only this toilet this toilet we don't have ac so this this wall is acting as a partition wall okay so we need to know the area of this one so the area is seven feet into seven feet so seven feet is the length seven feet is the width so we will consider the area length seven feet and the height of the wall is 9.84 so the area of the partition wall is 7 into 9.84 so here the u value uh, we need a u value for wall roof floor glass everything so we will see first how to find out the easy, uh, u value is very easy so after that we will see the delta t then we will quickly find out one by one
So the first one is we will see the U value of the external wall. So you can see here some civil requirement they has given like a solid brick, solid brick face and common is a 12 inch solid brick and is a 12 inches thickness and 123 is the weight because we need uh, we need mainly the weight. So I'll tell you why we need the weight. So the next one is is finishing with the metal lathe plaster and three by four inch sand plaster. Okay. So let's see the U value of this item. And here in the page number uh, I have given for all the items so you can quickly refer this page number in the career handbook okay. So this is the career handbook page number is 66 and if you see the heading it is transmission coefficient for the masonry walls and there are different types you can see here uh, for example here uh, like this is the face and common common only this is the stone type and this is the poured concrete so in our case it falls under solid brick because as you see here in the U value table. You can see it's a solid brick, a solid brick, and it is 12 inch wall. Okay, 12 inch and weight is 123. So if you give, uh, if you see here, it's a 12 inch is here, and the weight is 123. So this is the type of wall we are using. And uh, the next one we need to see the uh, the finishing. Okay, so finishing type uh, if you see here, it is the half inch, uh, sorry, three by four inch, and metal lathe plastered and sand plastered. Okay, so the same we will see there also. So here is metal lathe plastering and 3 by 4 inch sand plaster. Okay, so this is the 12, uh, 12 inch wall and for against this one the U value is 0 0.25. Okay, similarly if you uh, if you have a different uh, type of material uh, instead of solid brick, so you can find the U value from here. Okay, so if you want a exact value then uh, you can uh, your, you can ask your uh, uh, architectural engineer to provide the U value. So normally what happens in every project the local municipality uh, has some regulation like the U value should not exceed this value like that. So we can consider that because in the very initial stage if you don't have that much uh, information you can follow the maximum value of uh, what your municipality recommends so i will show you that one also uh, otherwise you can uh, if you know the exact information you can ask from your architectural engineer and you can find the exact u value so so the next one here is concrete that is for the roof 4 inch concrete the weight is 47 pounds per square feet is a the, the finishing is suspended plaster half inch okay so let's see what is that and the page number is uh, 71 so we will get the u value from here so here uh, table number 27 so different u value is given for the uh, roofing okay roofing so here uh, you can see the flat metal uh, preformed slab concrete and gypsum board so different types are here so our case it is the concrete so the uh, item is suspended plaster okay it's a 4 inch it's a 4 inch 47 pounds per, uh, per square feet weight it's a suspended plaster and if it is, the, it is a half inch okay half inch suspended plaster so the u value is 0 0.20 so the next one is the glass so the type is is the ordinary glass the regular plate a heat absorbing uh, capacity 48 to 56 percentage so inside vertical blind we have so this is uh, if you see here this is the vertical uh, blind and uh, next one is um, it's a medium color okay so we need to refer page number 52 for the u value so this one is table number 16 from page number 52 so this is for the heat gain through glass okay so we have heat absorbing glass uh, 48 to 50 percent heat absorbing capacity and we have the inside vertical uh, blends and it's a medium color okay so for this item the u value is 0 0.59 so the next one here is a floor floor tile uh, and with the thickness 8 inch is a sand aggregate 8 inch thickness weight weight 82 it's a metal lathe plaster 3 by 4 inch sand plaster so we need to refer page number 73 so let me open this one this is page number 73 you can see here and the type uh, we see here it is a floor tile first of all then sand aggregate type then the thickness is 4 inch 42 sorry is uh, is 8 inch 82 and next next one is the metal lathe plastered and it's a 3 by 4 inch sand plaster okay so for this item the u value is 0 0.27 okay so now we have only one final item so the last one is the partition wall so partition hollow clay tile is a 4 inch weight is 16 uh, pounds per square feet both side finish gypsum or wood lathe plastered and half inch lightweight plaster so we need to refer the page number 70 so here uh, we we have page number uh, 70 table 26 for the transmission coefficient for partition wall and uh, we have hollow concrete block and hollow clay tile so our type is uh, hollow clay tile and the uh, thickness is 4 inch weight is 16 and we have both side finish okay not one side we have both side finish and the type is gypsum or wood lay plaster okay and it is half inch lightweight plaster Okay, plastering so for this item if you see here the u value is 0 0.18 so now we, we found the u value for all item let's let's start the formulas okay 
So before applying the final value to the formula, we need to understand one more concept here. For example, you consider here in below example, one area is AC, another is non-AC. That means this is a ground floor and this is a first floor. Ground floor, there is no AC. Uh, just for the example, first floor, there is a AC. So in this condition, this wall, okay, this wall, it is acting like a floor. Okay, in the civil uh, architectural point of view and mechanical point of view, there is a, a simple difference is there. I will tell you what is that. So, uh, first of all, as per architectural point of view, we have ground floor and first floor. There is a uh, one, one floor is there. Mechanical also same in this example because this is non AC, this is AC. So, we have one floor here. But coming to the second example, we have the basement. This is non AC, ground floor uh, AC, first floor AC, second floor AC. Okay, so here how many floor as per architectural point of view ground floor first floor second floor okay there are three floors as per architectural point of view for mechanical point of view there is only one non ac all others are ac so far as only this this floor okay this floor we will consider as a um, non ac area because this is the only floor we, uh, this is the only one floor we have as a mechanical point of view as per architecture it is three floor because we need to consider what is non ac what is ac okay that is our concept mechanical so similarly, uh, if you see the partition, suppose we have a room like this, this is the top view and here we have a non-AC area, here we have non-AC area, here we have non-AC area. That means how many partitions will come? One, two and three. Okay. So in the mechanical point of view, there will be three partitions if there is a non-AC area surrounding the wall. Okay. So this is the difference between architectural and the mechanical point of view. So here you can see one important question, U value of the door and U value of the partition wall is different. So where to enter the your different U value in the software, okay. So let's see uh, our example, our uh, room example. So here what happened, as I told you, this is the partition wall and in the partition wall I have a door. So here if you see, I have taken the screenshot from the HAP software. So there is a entry for the two options, wall partition and ceiling partition. So we will come to the ceiling partition next. First wall partition, we can enter the area, we can enter the U value only for the wall wall partition wall so suppose uh, as i shown you here uh, in our example we have the door in the uh, partition wall okay so u value of the partition wall is different and uh, u value of the door is different u value of the partition wall is different but here we don't have any option to enter the u value of the door so in this case for example there is one, one more thing so uh, the same uh, partition wall suppose consider here uh, we have a window here okay just for the example i'm telling you so here we have a window so that time the window u value is different okay the window have the glass so glass u value is different so uh, we don't have any uh, option in the hap software to enter all the u value of the door uh, window uh, we don't have any option like this we have only one option that is the wall so the next one is the delta t that very quickly you can find out and after finding out you can if you put simply in the floor and partition you can get the answer okay so that one i will continue in the next video so if you have any doubt please add your comment in the comment section till then bye bye see you